Hi and welcome to All Things Photography and welcome to the beautiful port of sunny Weymouth here in Dorset. Today I'm going to be talking about the 2 times teleconverter Mark III from Canon. Okay, so I've been looking at teleconverters for a few years now because I want to extend the reach of my 70 to 200 mil L 2.8 IS lens from Canon. Um, but I obviously don't want to fork out for a 400 mil lens or a 500 mil lens, but I want to keep some quality there. A few years ago, I bought a cheap teleconverter, which really didn't work. You had a lot of fall off of the edges, didn't work well at wide apertures, if at all. Uh, you had to manual focus in, in wide apertures. Uh, and really the overall quality was pretty poor, so it stayed on the shelf. I did look at the Mark II from Canon, two times converter a few years ago, read the reviews, wasn't overly impressed, so I kind of left it. I knew people that had used it, pretty much didn't use it because of the quality issues and things. So when the Mark III, when I came across the Mark III, I read lots of reviews, um, and again, there's, you know, good reviews, bad reviews. People have used it with certain cameras uh, where it hasn't worked. Uh, maybe they're, they're not getting the autofocus at 5.6 or f8, um, so they're having to manual focus, which can be a pain because if you're using it for sports or wildlife, you really need the autofocus. Um, so, so that's one issue with those. Other times it won't work necessarily with certain lens combinations and cameras. So for me, now that I've bought the Canon 5D Mark IV, I wanted to try it out with the 70 to 200 mil lens because I think the, you know, those quality issues should dissipate somewhat. And because I've got a 30 megapixel uh, sensor, obviously I can crop out the edges to get the sweet spot um, and hopefully get some really sharp images. So I've been out taking photos with the lens, um, with the converter, um, and I've, I've been using it at 5.6. Now, one point is you do need a, uh, a lens with an aperture of 2.8 because you're gonna lose two stops of light. So my 2.8 lens on the Canon becomes a 5.6 and it will autofocus at 5.6 and it will also autofocus at f8 and I think even f11. Um, so I've been pretty pleased with that and I've got some good results so far. In fact, I've been photographing some swans and ducks and things and I've been autofocusing f16. So it just seems to work, this combination works really well. But today to test the quality of this, to show you the, the quality, I'm gonna be doing some filming at f5.6, f8, f11, f16 and f22 and I'm going to do little clips with each aperture setting on both the Canon 5D Mark IV and on the Panasonic GH4. But now the Panasonic GH4 has the Metabone speed booster attached to it to allow me to put the Canon lens on so I actually gain a stop of light so I can actually go to f4 on the on the, uh, the GH4. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take 10 clips, like I say both cameras at those five different apertures, see what the quality's like um, and I may even do them at high ISO as well, but generally I'm going to be on ISO 100 on the Canon, ISO 200 on the Panasonic because that's the lowest it will go to. And then I'm going to take some photos at the same apertures with both cameras or actually with just the Canon because I'm not really going to use it for stills on the Panny. So I'm going to take some stills with the 5D Mark IV as well and show you the kind of quality you can expect. Okay, so I'm now filming on the Canon EOS 5D Mark IV and you can see the tremendous reach we've got with this setup. If you remember, that was in the background um, during the intro to this video. And you can see that we've, I'm actually focusing using the rear touch screen on the Riviera sign you see in the background there. But with this setup, we've got the lens set to 200 millimeter with the two times converter, that's 400 mil. Then you've got to multiply that by the 1.74 times, I think it is, um, with the, this just drove off, so I've had to refocus the, the van I was focusing on drove off and it followed it. So I've just now refocused on the shot behind. But yeah, so you've added the 1.74 times to that kind of configuration and you've got a really powerful zoom lens. Now at the moment I'm F, on f5.6, but let me just, I'm actually locked down. And one hint I've, or tip I have got is when you're on a tripod filming with any long lens or any lens, you really want to turn the stabilizer off because it will actually hunt for focus and it'll kind of ruin your shots. But when you're locked down with the uh, long lens on, just turn the stabilizer off. But let me just show you, even locked down at this incredible length, if I shake the camera, you can see you get the most awful jello with the 5D Mark IV. So this cannot be used with this lens combination for any moving subjects unless you're really panning with them. But you know, for a static shot, it's fine. But anything else where the subject's moving, I would never use this on the 5D Mark IV. Great for photos, hopefully. Good for static videos like this. But yeah, for, for moving subjects, forget about it. So now we're on f5.6. I'm not gonna worry too much about the shutter speed because obviously I 
just need the aperture. So can't be bothered to change filters. I think we're on about 320th of a second at the moment. So we're on f5.6 with that configuration. It's the 5D Mark IV, two times converter and the lens set to 200 millimeter. So now we're going to switch to f8. Okay, so now we're on f8 and the shutter speed's at around 200th of a second. Now, the reason I'm not worried about the shutter speed with this is because we're, we haven't really got any moving subjects uh, that are going to have any significant effect. Um, obviously, you want motion blur, so you really want to match the or multiply the focal length by times two, <laughs> supposedly. Uh, obviously, with this configuration, you're going to need a shutter speed of about 2,000. So, um, yeah, with this, uh, I'm not worried about the shutter speed because we're locked down. But that's F8 now with that configuration, and we're still focused on the buildings in the background. So, we'll see if the sharpness has increased any. Okay, we're now on F11, and the shutter speed I think is around a hundredth of a second, which is getting more to what I'd kind of use. Uh, sorry, when I said before about multiplying the, the focal length, you don't, you multiply the, the frame rate. So we're on 25th of a second frame rate, and we're now on a multiplication of that with four times the frame rate, so it's not so bad. Um, but again, F11 now, uh, focused on the background. I'm hoping it's getting sharper at 4K and looking better. Um, so we're now going to go to F16, which is one of my favourite apertures for this sort of setup. So we're now on F16 and the shutter speed is now at a 50th, which is perfect. It's twice the frame rate of 25 frames a second. So this really, without a filter on the lens, in bright sunlight, is the ultimate setup. I've got F16, which I think is going to be the sharpest aperture with this uh, two times converter on. 50th of a second, no filters needed because I've already got two lenses on there. I've got the two times converter, which is adding more glass, which can deteriorate the quality. So without having to put filters on, I'm actually quite happy with this setup. So for static shots, like I said, this, this is working out pretty good. I think F16 is going to be one of the best apertures. So 50th of a second, F16 in bright sunlight with an equivalent of something like, a I don't know, 800 or 1000 mil lens. Uh, work that out 400 sorry about a five to six hundred mil lens so it's, it's pretty good but you can see the difference from the original intro to this video to the reach we've got here it's actually pretty good so for a static shot i'd be really happy with this on the 5d mark IV. but let's go to f22 and see if it either gets sharper or starts to degrade okay so i'm now on f22 and i've had to increase the iso to 250 because I wanted to keep the shutter speed of uh, 50th of a second. So we're on 50th of a second, F22, ISO 250. And in my experience, when you close the aperture too much on filming or photography stills, you can actually lose, you can start to lose the sharpness as the, the light gets, it's called diffraction. When it comes through the lens and the aperture's too small, it can actually degrade the quality at the edges. So this is about the limit I'd go to with this, but it'd be interesting to see how it compares to F16, F8, and the other uh, F11, 5.6. So that's really the five apertures on the Canon 5D Mark IV. What we're going to do now is go to the GH4 with the Metabone Speed Booster and do the same test with that. So this is the setup I'm using. It's the Canon EF 70-200 2.8L IS with the 2 times converter Mark III and the Metabone Speed Booster on the GH4 outputting to the Ninja Flame ProRes HQ. Right, so we're now on the Panasonic GH4. We've got the same lens configuration with the 70 to 200 at 200 mil, with the Canon two times converter Mark III and the Metabone Speed Booster. Now the Speed Booster actually gives you an extra uh, stop of light. So we're currently shooting at F4 um, and the shutter speed is 500th of a second. I'm outputting to the At Atomos Ninja Flame to ProRes HQ at 4K, 25 frames a second. And now, with f4 i'm expecting this to be completely mushy and not too sharp at all now that's because again because the out the wide aperture with this huge lens configuration isn't going to be great i don't think now i have got the added bonus of having focus peaking on both the gh4 and the ninja flame uh, whereas the canon only has to rely on the touchscreen autofocus on the back um, or your own senses if you're manually focusing so really, uh, this is about as sharp as it can get at this aperture with this uh, humongous reach. And you know, you can see the difference when we were, again, when, if you look at the beginning of the video where I was standing, that's, I'm filming right on the very furthest distance to the shops in the background of Weymouth Port. So that's F4 and we're on the same lens configuration with a super high shutter speed. Again, it's ISO 200. So obviously as I increase the aperture, or decrease the size of the aperture, we should get a slower shutter speed. But generally, this is just to test the aperture, so that's currently at f4. We're now going to switch to 5.6. So we're now at f5.6, and we have a slower shutter speed. 
Uh, again, using focus peaking, I've focused critically on the, everything in the background and it's all showing up as either blue on the GH4 or red on the flame. And hopefully that's getting a little bit sharper than the F4 aperture we had a second ago. We're now gonna to switch to F8 to see what that's like. So that's now F8. Panasonic GH4 and the Canon lens, the Canon teleconverter and the Metabone speed booster. Hopefully that's getting a bit sharper now. Uh, the peaking's actually showing up a lot more, so it's obviously focused okay. So if it is now out of focus, then it's down to the, the lens configuration. Let's go to F11. So that's F11 now and focus peaking still looks good. So we should be in focus. So I'm hoping that that's going to be a lot sharper now. Uh, there may be a slight wobble we've got a bit of wind and it's catching on the ninja flame so that's obviously going to adjust the, the even though the camera's locked down and everything on a sturdy tripod uh, any movement with this focal length it's going to be uh, showing up any sort of movement so hopefully it's enough for you to see whether the sharpness is back so next we're going to go to f16 so that's now f16 and at 4k i'm hoping that's going to be really sharp even with this lens configuration we're going through three lenses now the 70 to 200 the two times converter and the metabones so there's so many elements of glass for the light to get to uh, get through before it gets to the sensor i'm hoping it's reasonably sharp now i'm going to do a few more tests after this but hopefully you're seeing there that even with this full configuration and this incredible reach with these lenses that these lenses give uh, you can still get output really good sharp quality images with f16 so lastly, we're on f22 and we've got a good shutter speed of a 50th of a second. Uh, so this may be sharper than f16. You may start getting some diffraction um, from my previous tests. I've noticed that f16 seems to be the, the sweet spot, seems to be the best aperture uh, for this huge configuration, uh, especially with just the 70 to 200 and two times converter. I'm hoping it works with the Metabones as well. So that's uh, f22 at 50th. Uh, sorry 50 frames a second and with that full lens configuration so again if that's sharp I'll be pretty happy because that'll be a good aperture to use uh, for filming and as before I'm actually going to just show you that compared to the Canon I'm going to swivel the camera here now and you can see the rolling shutter is nowhere near as bad as it is on the Canon so you probably could use this camera this whole setup uh, for sports and nature where you're having to move the camera about a bit so my preferred setup would be this whole rig I've got now Panasonic GH4 with the Metabone speed booster two times converter 70 to 200 mil lens and with the with the shut the aperture f16 I think if you can get decent shutter speed with that it'll be great for filming all sorts of events filming the M&S food hall right in the distance using this setup which is about there absolutely miles away so you can see M&S MS is right over in those buildings right in the distance that's how close we can get and hopefully that's sharp at f16 